This video is going to sound different because I'm trying a different microphone setup and processing uh, facility on the phone, so it, it might be quieter, it might be louder, it might be bassier, it might be trebler, I'm not sure yet. You guys can tell what you think of it. This is a really annoying device from Poundland. It's part of the Halloween range and it's a crow. It could be a crow. Um, what other... could it be a rook? Uh, I'm not really great in birds. I'm guessing crow or raven, because that's kind of Halloweenish and spooky. And this is one of these things that's got the, the light sensor in it, so that when you walk in front of it, it makes a noise. And, well, I'm guessing it's crow, because it sounds crowish. And uh, it's got this little label over the speaker here, which, uh, is that going to make it louder? No, it doesn't. It actually makes it quieter. So it's actually louder with a little label over the front creating a wee sound box. This is getting quite annoying, so let's uh, get the batteries out of it before it keeps going all the time. Oh. And uh, firstly I'll show you how you get it out of this thing. Uh, if you do what I do and you just say, oh right, okay, I need access to that screw and you pull the legs off, they just snap off because they're glued in. To get access to that screw there, you uh, pull this clip out and then you can get access to the screw. But unfortunately at that point, although you can get it open, it is glued. So, um, yeah, it's not that easy. Uh, is it easy to get in to drill holes for the eyes? I think it is, actually. It's quite dark in there owing to the fact it's a crow. Uh, I think you could actually get in there and drill holes for the eyes to put red LEDs in if you wanted. So it's got other options there if you want to make spooky crows. That's assuming it is a crow. I really am not very good at identifying birds. Crow, raven, all very similar to me. So here's the circuit module. And uh, if we zoom in and take a close look at this, we can see that there's a blob. And the blob bit is the bit that actually does the sound effect. And it drives the little speaker directly. And uh, then we've got the transistor here, which buffers up the signal from the sensor. Now, the sensor, it's very, very simple. If I pop this lid off. Am I going to be able to pop the lid off? Yes. That is a standard LDR inside. An LDR with a little tunnel in front of it. Now if I zoom back out again, we can go into this in greater detail. So, if you were to look at a wall, say for instance you're in Dr. Ashen's lab, and that's a wall, and there's the famous Ashen sofa. I'm not actually sure what shape the whole old sofa is, but there it is, and it's got a slightly siled area here where he does his videos. And there's picture frames in the wall with, with pictures and stuff like that. And imagine you're looking at that, and you just had a light sensor just pointing ambient, you know, just open. It would see the whole area. And you want to actually detect light movement, light modulation. So what you do is you put a tube in front of it. So in this case, they've got the light sensor and they've just got a tube sitting in front of it, a plastic tube. And what that means is that now it's got a narrower beam angle. So now it's looking. What it sees, whatever direction it's pointing, it sees a small circle of um, the wall or whatever it's looking at. And for best results, you should point at maybe a bright surface or a dark surface if people are wearing bright clothing or illuminated. It works on the change in light so that when... Dr. Ashens walks across there and it'll detect this body walking through there. That's that's uh, Dr. Ashens. He's quite an odd shape. I don't think he is actually that shape. He's probably not that. There's his wee beard and an eye. Just one eye and hair. Yes, anyway, as he walks across, it will cause a sudden change of intensity in that circle. And that's what this device picks up. So we can go into that a little bit further detail. Sorry, Dr. Ashens, that's a shit drawing, but not to worry. To go into further detail, I have already taken a picture of this circuit board and printed it out on a piece of paper so I could scribble all over it. So here's the blob that generates the sound. There's the sound transducer with the pins sticking out and just folded over. And here's the two connections for the LDR, the light dependent resistor. And that is just a resistor that changes in um, resistance depending on the light level. The more light there is, the lower its resistance goes. Uh, this is a cadmium sulfide photoresistor. It's the one that the eco hippies are trying to get rid of because it contains an absolutely microscopic quantity of cadmium, but they've deemed that that's a killer material and will destroy everybody. So they're trying to get rid of cadmium. The resistors. Uh, We've got 
a fairly standard NPN transistor here. We've got a mystery capacitor, a one microfarad. I say it's one microfarad. I measured it in circuit, which is never an ideal situation. And it came out about 1.2 microfarad, which it may be 1.2 microfarad, or it may be one microfarad. It's hard to tell. To measure capacitors, you should really measure them out of circuit. This one I couldn't measure because there is actively circuitry across it, and that was skewing the result. It wouldn't pick up a reading on that. Resistors, we've got 8, 2, 3, which means 8, 2, and 3 zeros is 82k. We've got 1, 5, 6, which is a huge one. Uh, that's 1, 5, and 6 zeros, which is 15 mega ohm. Uh, that's used to uh, bias the transistor on very slightly. Uh, and also uh, provide a sort of current return path through this capacitor just to balance it off. That's, that's not a very impressive description, but I'll show you later on. And then we've got a 303, which is 30, with uh, 3 zeros, 30k. So uh, that's that resistor, and that is being used as a kind of pull-up resistor. So let's doodle this out. There's our 3-volt rail connected to the batteries. Let's uh, draw the batteries in. It is just two standard little button cells. And there's the 0-volt, or negative. So what do we have? Um, we've got the LDR is connected to the positive rail. The positive rail connects to the LDR. It also connects to the uh, 15 mega ohm resistor and it also connects to the 30k resistor. So I'm thinking we'll start off with, we'll actually start off with the, um, yeah, the LDR. So let's uh, draw that in here. The LDR, light dependent resistor with its little tunnel. And the LDR, Is then got this resistor, the 82K, going from there to the zero volt rail. And what that means is that that's forming a potential divider with this resistor varying. So the voltage at this point is going to waver up and down. The voltage at that point here, wavering up and down, is coupled to the gate, the base of that transistor. Cover to the base of the transistor, and we've obviously got the positive feeding. So, okay. So here's the base of the transistor. Transistor here is connected. The emitter is connected to the zero volt rail. The collector is connected via that 30k resistor. Uh, let's get rid of the uh, transistor then. Uh, so the transistor, the when the transistor's being turned on, the, it will pull down the voltage this, on this resistor. So the res resistor's limiting the current from the 3-volt rail. As the transistor pulls on its sort of effective resistance lowers, it will actually pull that voltage down. That has a little capacitor there connected to the negative rail, presumably to remove any sort of f hum and flicker that might cause false triggering. And then that goes to the chip. Let's call it just chip. Blob chip. I could have called it a, a cob chip on board. Uh, so that's got the supply there, and then it's got the output to its little uh, speaker, which I think is a moving coil speaker for that sort of level of sound, style of sound. <coughs> the transistor then is connected via a capacitor to that uh, the light sensor area with the varying voltage, and that's the sort of roughly one microfarad capacitor. Let's uh, fill the value of this in. That resistor was the 82K. Uh, and so that just leaves the other resistor, which is the bias resistor, which comes from the positive to the base of the transistor. So that's going from the positive rail. So all those resistors have effectively. OK. Uh, and it's going to the base of the transistor just to provide a slight bias to uh, start the transistor turning on. It makes it more sensitive. So that's a, a huge 15 mega ohm, apparently. OK, so now when any light modulation is detected, it's uh, the voltage variation is going to be coupled through onto the base of the transistor, but it only changes. It's only when that actual voltage is fluctuating that it will be coupled through and there'll be sort of um, current flow effectively coupled through that capacitor, which will turn the transistor on. 
Um, can I uh, just emulate that? Would it be visible if I stuck a LED across that? Hold on. Let's uh, put the battery back in at the risk of lots of like crowish, ravenish type noises. Quite annoying. Um, and let's get an LED and put it across. It's probably ill advised, but I'll put it across to the from the positive to the base of that transistor. And as I, are we going to see that? Do you see my uh, what it being? It's reacting to my finger going in front with the intensity of the LED is changing. It's detecting fluctuations. So that's fundamentally it. It's a very very simple way of detecting um, movement. It's a very cheap way of detecting movement. And that circuit you could use use it for other things. It can be used to trigger other devices, and it's much much cheaper than a passive infrared detector. But it will detect sudden fluctuations in light. Say for instance. There was clouds passing or, you know, someone turned the light on in the room, it will suddenly, it will trigger this because it does purely detect light. But it's a very simple circuit. Very, very simple. It's quite neat, actually. If you wanted to just write light that LED, what I could have done there is I could have just got rid of that resistor, put, possibly put another resistor in series, lower value, with the LED, and that would have just meant the LED would fluctuate as a detected uh, in change of intensity in the room. Very simple, but it works very well, and that's why you find them in so many of these really annoying things like the the, the whistling garden gnomes, etc. Sort of type noise, and you know the the chirping birds and things like that. So um, yeah, it's quite neat. It's quite a smart little circuit. So yes, you can put red LEDs into it, but I have to say that three millimeter ones would probably be a better choice. But all I had was five, and now it looks like a bug-eyed crow. I've got a USB lead feeding this, and all I've got inside, uh, I've connected the two LEDs in parallel, and there's a 100 ohm resistor limiting to the current, and it limits the current to about 30 milliamps total, so 15 milliamps per LED. You could use a higher value resistor, like 220 ohms or more, if you just wanted a gentle glow in the eyes. Uh, the auto transducer took it apart. It basically, well, let me actually show you this. I'll, I'll zoom in in the audio transducer because it's quite interesting in its own right. Uh, is that actually focused? Uh, yes, that is focused. So here's the actual coil. And the coil is just round a little former, metal former with a metal plate. And then there's a slightly magnetic ring that goes round the outside. And then the actual, the sound box area, I suppose. I'm not actually poked that out. I should poke it out. Let's poke it out. There's a little metal diaphragm. Ooh. Maybe I won't poke that out. It's, it's going to go through suddenly and my fingers are going to get in the way. But uh, there's a little metal diaphragm in the back of that and that is made to vibrate and that's what creates the noise. It's very, very cheap and simple. But yes, uh, you know, in a way, they're worth getting just because you can put the LEDs, preferably 3mm LEDs in. It's quite easy to drill, but I would recommend just melting a little indent first or getting a wee pilot hole just to make sure they go in neatly. And it is a bit footy because you're working into a little cavity, so uh, you might be better putting leads in both and then extend them out and then sort of pop them in and a drop of glue or hot melt to hold them in place. But it does look uh, quite good. It would look better with the small LEDs, but it does give the sort of glowing eye effect and it looks quite a menacing little thing.